how to make a paper folded accordion lampshade strung together by a string with a fringe of paper cut words, almost like lace. Here we see the paper words on the edge of the paper and in a folded version. Let's begin with the paper words. We use two strips of paper sewn together to make it a handy piece or an easier piece to work with. And we're gonna be cutting through two similar sized layers. Using the lighter part of the pattern towards the top so the light can come through easier and therefore cutting towards the other end. Decide how large your letters are gonna be. I'm using about two or three centimeters and I'm creating in my mind an invisible line that will guide me for every letter that I write. I'm aiming towards the line and the scissors become just like a pen. If you write on a piece of paper, they will go towards this invisible line. And the next word letter is L and quite an easy one to do in the beginning. So just make sure that you're in control of the scissors. You're only putting the pair the scissors, you're leaving it on the paper. It's a dialogue between the scissors and the paper. And I'm doing a rough cut of the words. I'm not gonna be cutting out the, the inside of the O out yet but um, you can always refine it at the end or you can refine it as you go along and you can also cut out the, the, um, the space of the O as you go along. That's just, uh, that's between you and the cutting. It's a good idea to have a word or a pattern of letters that you want to write. You can write the alphabet, you can write a love poem, you can write something that reminds you of the paper that you're using. If you're using maps, it's a good idea to write perhaps of a favorite destination because these words will in some way have an intention that become part of the conversation when they are lit up or when they are hanging somewhere in your, in your home. And uh, if you decide to give them away, you can always write a birthday message, for example, or um, some kind of gifted message in, within the top fringe and nobody will really be able to read the whole thing. So it becomes a kind of a rebus, a secret language that you know is there below it all or below the light. So the next word is illumination and there's no spell check. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake. If you cut out cut too much out, try to make it into a simple eye and um, and just feel the, the satisfaction at the end of it, that when you have put that attention into it, you will notice that it becomes just like meditation where we pay attention to something. We are paying attention to what we're writing. It's not, uh, it's not uh, a something that just happens. It might just happen if you don't know what you're going to write, see if it comes to you as you go along. But I do think it's a good idea to start with a word, even writing once upon a time, and then um, take it from there, see what happens. It can free you up. It can really make some kind of breakthrough of cutting through these different words on, on the paper, on the edges. I'm just noticing here how much space I've got left and I've got illumination. I'm just placing in again in my mind. And if you need to, to, do, to do the outline with a pencil, you can of course do that. It's just something I feel more restricted by than actually it doesn't do anything for me because I feel that the fun of it is, is what happens whilst I'm cutting. So I'm very focused and concentrated when I cut these, these words out, but that's part of what I enjoy about it. When you've got a little piece left, I'm right, cutting in an S as well, because it could be flower illuminations. And sometimes when you sew the pieces of paper together, you will cut into or sew into a word and have to cut a letter off. It doesn't always matter because at the end of the day, people won't necessarily be able to read what you've written, but you know it's there. To make the light shine through the letters like O and A, I'm using the sharp part of the scissors and poking through the paper and creating um, uh, the, the letters by carefully holding onto the letters, gripping onto the paper 
but not making sure that I breathe as I'm doing it so it doesn't become a struggle to be cutting. Rem when you cut out the letters, remember that the paper moves as much as the scissors do. It's always a combination, a dialogue between the paper and the scissors and your imagination. Here I'm just using one piece of paper. I've t put the other piece of paper away and just sometimes it can be easier. It depends on the thickness of the paper and the how precise you want it to be. If you cut through two pieces, it might be a little bit more difficult. Now we're ready to fold. And on this piece of paper, as you can see, there's get about, about seven or eight pleats. And it's got a line that I'm using as a guideline to create the first pleat, which will be my seam when I sew them together. I'm then measuring three centimeters pleats all the way down the line. And these small dots will indicate my first pleat. And actually the first pleat is what guides the next pleat. So the first one, use the pencil and then use as much your the sensation of the paper, your own eyesight, what you see. I'm turning the piece of paper around to make sure that I've got the pleat on both sides as clean cut as possible. If you um, if you don't press down too too much, you can rechange the pleat. I mean, if you, I'll show you because I make I make a mistake a little or not a little. I wouldn't even call it a mistake, but I'm overspilling the paper, so I go back on it and. And if I haven't pleated it too strongly, I can actually soften the pleat and make sure that they actually get the same, the same um, width and making sure that there's a straight line going there and that the pleat goes into the little dot, the pencil dot there. And then I've got a more or less equal pleats all the way along. And making sure too that the outer part of it is very, very smooth on the eye as well, that that's where you really put most of your attention. If the inside one, the white on the white side here, doesn't, it has a wave in the pleats, do not worry too much because it's not the part that will get seen. It's the part that will be, that will lean on the, on the lamp, um, on the metal, on the metal structure of the shade. Folding it together and enjoying as well that this if this it's very satisfying to get the pleats as equal as possible and if you've cut the piece of paper really precisely you will be guided by the the um, the edges of of the paper as well this was not completely straight so it's 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 waving a bit and and so if you if you do have a, a, a have the chance of really cutting out the piece the first piece of paper straighter than I did then you will be helped by that and otherwise just pay attention to the pleats and here's where I sew the the stitch of the of the um, two pieces that I put together and I'm showing you here how when this part is not straight it doesn't matter as much as it actually doesn't really get it doesn't show because you'll have the outer layer is, it ha, is the one that needs to be straight. On the inside, it's not a, a worry if, it's, if it waves a bit. So pleat away. And when you've got enough pieces, you sew them together. And uh, you work out. I'm just showing you one little trick that you can do as well as you could, of course, put make sure that the first pleat as measured three centimeters on each on each side, both side top and and below, which will make the first pleat the guidance for the next pleats. When you sew them together, see if you can figure out whether some parts are better match better than others, especially when they're smaller pieces that you sew together. And then you place them and you align them at the top. Make sure that you that the letters at the top are not the ones that can be cut away. So you sew along there and I'm wanting to get rid of that black line. And as you can see, the lower bit is not the same length. So I'm cutting that off. I'm also cutting a little bit too close to the edge here. I'm worried. So I'm just restitching and the next piece and make sure that they're aligned at the top and run the sewing machine. And of course you can do this by hand as well. If you want to, if you don't have a sewing machine, 
where you are, then, then, you, then hand stitch it. Then I'm counting them and I've got about 45 pleats. Now this is not something you need to be accurate about, but that's more or less what you've seen in the pictures that I've done. And so now I'm sewing them, I'm doing as if I were, it were sewing a cushion, I'm inside, I'm taking the outside, or the inside out, and then stitching them together, making sure that all the threads are cut off because they get tangled into the, the letters. And then I'm punching through 10 centimeters from above, I'm punching through to make the holes to string them together. And if you don't have a puncher, you can just use a pair of the, your scissors and and cut through two or three pleats at a time. And then you string it together. And voila, you've got a pleated lampshade. <laughs>